What I've got in front of me is the Akai Professional LPD8 laptop pad controller. This is plugged in via USB to my MacBook Pro. On my MacBook, I'm running a program called QLab. For those of you who don't know what QLab does, it's a show control program. I predominantly use it just for the audio side, but it will also trigger things like video and send out commands to lighting consoles. So today I'm going to show you how to use my latest investment for my kit bag, which is, as I said, the Akai LPD-8, which is about £30 or so. This plugs in with the included USB cable to your computer. If you're using QLab, which is only available on Mac at the moment, um, it will show up and work out of the box. OS X has all the drivers for it. So let's look at the interface itself on the LPD-8. As you can see, I've got uh, eight squares here. These are my eight pads or triggers. On the right, I also have these eight encoders. Now, I haven't used these encoders yet. I'm sure they can be used with QLab, but these are kind of designed for uh, if you want to control volume of a track, you can have these assigned to a volume of a track and you can actually change that on the fly. One of the neat things about this controller is though it's only got eight physical pads, you've actually got four groups. Now these four groups are called programs. You can see they're in red here, program one, two, three, and four. If I press program, I get the light up underneath here to say I'm on program one. I can choose between two, three, and four simply by pressing each of the pads. Once I've chosen the program or the group I want to be in, I simply press pad to go back to pad. I've got another eight pads now, and these will be sending out different signals to the laptop. This means in total I could have 32 triggers that I can use with my computer just using these pads here. Now for this example, I'm going to go back to program one and go back to pad. And now we're back into program one. You see they're named one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You don't need to worry about these too much. They won't be shown up on the computer as I can just use a way for it to learn very easily. So the main reason that I use this is I have a queue list. It's just a list of queues that I need to fire one after another, maybe at different times, but they always stay in that same order. Now what I can do is I can control one of these pads to be a go button, maybe a stop button, and an up and down, so I can go up and down the list without having to have my computer keyboard near me. QLab's great just using your keyboard. Uh, to fire, you can press spacebar, which starts the track. You can press escape to finish the track, and obviously you can use the arrow keys to move up and down your queue list. That's where the LPD-8 controller comes into its own where it's nice and small and it's got a long cable so I can actually place it somewhere on the control surface and have my laptop further away. I also find that triggering cues is a lot easier using these pads here. So first of all let's go to the start and that's actually programming a go and a stop button. If I switch over to the screen now I can go down to the settings pane at the bottom right and you would usually start in general but I'm going to click on MIDI controls. And here we use MIDI show control, that's fine, don't need to worry about that. But down here we already have uh, go, preview selected, load, stop selected, etc. So the two that I want to program in first of all is go and panic all. Panic all just means stop any cues that are playing. If I go to go here, I can go note on, that means when I press the button in and not out. Click note on. And then I can click capture. It's now waiting for me to give it an input so it can learn which key I'm going to press. This means I don't actually have to remember which number of these keys are. So if I just pressed pad 4 nice and firmly, you can see that it's byte 1 is 39 and byte 2 is 126. Now you've got two values. The first value is actually what the key is and the second value is actually how hard I've hit it. These pads here are velocity sensitive which means the harder I hit it the higher the value. We don't want this because obviously I don't have to hit it exactly the same every time. So if we go to the second one, I can go in there and change it. I'm going to change it to any and hit enter. That means any time I press pad 4, it's going to go. Same thing with panic all. I'm going to change to note on. By default, it's going to be 0. I'm going to click capture. This time I'm going to go to pad 8, which is above my go. Hit it again nice and firmly we can see 43 and it's got 87. Change 87 to any, hit enter, that's now saved. So now I've got the go and the panic all control programmed in. The last thing we need to do is just check the box, use musical MIDI controls. And that's it. If we hit done now, it takes me back to my queue list. These are just some of the default Apple loops. So I've selected my first queue 
and all I can do simply is press pad 4 which is my go. And as you can hear my track is now playing. If I wanted to cancel that early, pad 8 and you can see that fades it out. By default QLab will always fade out when you panic. Let's say I need to hit two cues very quickly one after another so they play on top of each other. I can quite easily press go twice and then press panic all if I want to end them both early as well. And that's it done. Now, these last two, which I'll fire off for you now. Maybe I want these on their own keys. I might be using these two cues multiple times in a show, and I don't want to have to keep adding them back into the cue list. I can have two dedicated keys. I'm going to do pad 5 and pad 1. Now, this is done very much the same way, but you don't do it in the general settings. First of all, make sure you're in the edit mode. Select our first cue, which should be cartoon space. If we go down here to MIDI trigger, if we tick to enable, make sure it's on note on. You've got note and velocity. If you go down to the capture button here, we're then again waiting for MIDI. As this is my top cue, I'm going to go for pad 5. As you can see, we've got note 40 and velocity of 89. Please make sure that you change this back to any, and that's now set. I'm now going to go to my next cue, select it, I'm going to do the same thing. Select MIDI trigger on, note on, click capture, press the key I want that to be selected on, and then make sure we change velocity to any. Now that's all ready, if I want to Let's say play the first cartoon space. I just hit pad five. I can press that as many times as I like. Same thing with cue number five. I can use these anytime in the show. The last thing I might want to do is actually choose how I can go up and down the cue list without having to get to my keyboard. Again, this is done in the general settings. And then we go to select previous cue. We're going to do exactly the same again. Note on, capture. Because this is going up the cue list, I'm going to use pad 7. And then for down list, I'm going to do Q3. Remember to change these back to any. And then click done. So if you now look, what I've got is up and down, which means if I have to jump back a queue, if I've missed a queue, or I need to fire one again, I can easily just go up and down and fire whenever I want. Easily. You can then label this up and then have this preset. Now obviously if I've then got a part of the show where I have to just do a load of cues separately. Again, what I can do very quickly, hit program, hit program two, press pad again, and I've got a whole other eight. As you can see, as I'm pressing these, they're not firing the same cues because these are actually different notes. Back to program one, and I'm back. And now I'm back to my same settings that I had before. So this is a very flexible, very cheap, fun little controller that made my life a lot easier. The one issue I've had so far is actually marking these up. Obviously I don't want to do any, anything permanent on these because every show is slightly different. But actually things like LX tape and things like that don't stick very well to these pads. So I'm still trying to find a better solution. Now the last thing to note is that if you create a new file these settings will not be saved across. The easiest way to get around this is to create a default template. All you do is you create a blank show, maybe have these global settings that I've got here set up ready and just save that as a blank show. Every time you want to create a new show all you do is you open up that blank template show and work from that. So that's all of it today. I really recommend QLab. Uh, for basic stuff it's free then there are some ones that you can pay for and if you've got a very large show but a very limited budget you can also rent it on a daily basis. It's quite a powerful program. You can do things like I've said with video, live audio, uh, audios going out, different sound cards, surround sound, all of these crazy things. 
and can also send out uh, MIDI cues um, to other devices such as lighting desks. You can pretty much run the whole show from one computer. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll try and get some more out in the future. Any questions, let me know down below and I'll try and get them answered.